Doing a quick video on how to replace a radiator, but before we do that, we'll do an even quicker one on the valves on a radiator. Uh, on one side of some radiators in some homes, you will have a thermostatic radiator valve, uh, TRV. If you have a look at our video on how a TRV works, you'll see more about that. But on the other side of the radiator, you will have this little beauty, and this is called a lock shield valve. Okay, so there's a shield within there that locks down to stop the water coming in. Um, this side connects to the radiator, um, just straightforward radiator um, nut, screws onto that. This side comes from your hot water, um, from your central heating water system, so we'll leave that off. So the water is coming up through here. A lot of people think that the lock shield, let's take the cap off of the lock shield, that simply pulls off and you'll see that we have a little spindle there that we can turn on and off with a spanner. Um, the better lock shield valves come with another cap with a little slot in the head and we like to leave these on. The slot fits over the spindle and makes that easy to turn on and off. And as I said a lot of people think that with a lock shield valve it stops the water at this point here. It actually doesn't. It stops the water coming in through the bottom of the valve through the central heating. Now I'm going to open that fully and then I'm going to ask the camera to zoom in on that if that's at all possible and you can see that that's fully open it'll go a bit blurry I suspect while I move this around and, and close it to its fullest extent and then if you zoom in again you can see that that's fully shut so that's how a lock shield valve works they normally go on one side of the radiator. You can get um, lock shields that, that have a drain plug as well. That's always handy on the last radiator on the system. Have a drain plug on the lock shield and that, and that will allow you to drain all of the water out of the system to take your radiators on and off. Um, so there we go. That's how a, a lock shield valve works uh, from DIY Doctor. Hi. Um, a very short video to explain to the thousands of people that email us regularly um, and say they haven't been able to turn off their TRV when they're replacing a radiator. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at a TRV. That's a thermostatic radiator valve. Okay, we'll take that off. Fortunately, none of this is connected, so I didn't have to turn the water off. This is a TRV. There are several types and several manufacturers of TRVs. And it is as well to look for one with a replaceable head. Um, the TRV section, the actual thermostat, can be unscrewed from the valve itself. And that shows the plunger of the valve. When this plunger is fully depressed, now they're very, very hard to press in by hand. If you can't do it, then use something a little bit harder. But when that valve is fully depressed, the valve is off. I don't know if the camera can see inside of that valve. So the valve is operated um, by the thermostat. Now the thermostat has several settings on, they all do. Normally they start at 5, four go, go right the way down to what is a frost setting. Um, and you can see that by the little frost symbol there. I'm hoping the camera can you nod if you can see that's great. Um, and this one goes down to zero. Now some of them don't go down to zero. So be aware of that. Have a look for one that goes down to zero. And then you can be sure that this section here has depressed this plunger right to the bottom and turned the valve off. People don't realize that a thermostatic radiator valve isn't operated by the temperature of the water it's operated by the temperature of the room and if that room decides that it's going to be a bit cold the valve senses that and opens up to warm the radiator up depending on the setting that you put it on so if you turn it right down to number two for example that may turn the radiator off at, at that particular time then you take the radiator off if it's off overnight for example and the room gets cold the room will tell the thermostat that it needs a little bit of heat, the thermostat will open, the radiator valve will open and flood your kitchen. It's happened hundreds of times to hundreds of people and they've all emailed us. Okay, so that's uh, hence this video. So, 
The thermostat screws onto the top of the valve and to screw it on properly you'll need to set it to number 5 because the further down the plunger the harder it is to screw on. So that's on number 5, fully open and that screws on nicely. Okay. So if you're going to take a radiator off and you've got a thermostatic valve when you buy your thermostatic valve look for a valve that comes with a replacement cap and a lot of them do. So you take the thermostat section off and you put the cap on, it's almost like a, a lock shield cap and by turning that tighter and tighter and tighter that closes the valve fully. So that operates as a thermostat on setting zero and then you know for a fact that that valve is fully closed you can take the radiator off with no danger of, put it, of letting water through the system when the room calls for more heat. So that's how a thermostatic radiator valve works. Look for one with a replacement cap. Look for one that goes all the way down to zero. And then you, it's belt and braces. You can be absolutely sure then that if you need to turn your radiator off for any reason, that you're not going to let any water through when the room calls for more heat. DIY Doctor, how a thermostatic radiator valve works.